Trustee Thomas? Here. Whalen? Here. Zappa? All right, first order of business. It's a uh, formality, but nevertheless, we have to do it. Uh, we need to extend the oath of office to our newest uh, trustee, Jim Thomas, anyone who has not met him. Jim is, uh, lives down on Riverside and is replacing Jerry Pandy, who resigned as of last month. So do you want to uh, sure. administer this? Jim, if you'd like to raise your right hand. and Stand up and I think. Okay. You can. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Jim Thomas, have been appointed to the office of Village Trustee. I, Jim Thomas, have been appointed to the office of Village Trustee. I swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. I swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially discharge the and will faithfully and impartially discharge, discharge the <laughs> duties of the office. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you very much. Good work. I'd really like to say uh, this, is, uh, this is an honor. Uh, Larry and I have spoken for years about trying to make this become a reality, and uh, I uh, appreciate this opportunity. Uh, sorry to see Jerry Panning uh, not on the board. I think he did a great job in his uh, time that he was here, and I very much look forward to this. So thank you. Glad to have you with us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Six months. <laughs> 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 Nobody cursing you. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, we're a real informal group here. Mm -hmm. kind of loose. Okay. All right, Chair would entertain a motion to uh, approve the minutes from the special board meeting of November 1 and the regular board meeting of November 9, 2006. <laughs> Any comments or corrections? Looking to my left. I think that uh, Captain did an outstanding job <laughs> capturing the minutes of the meeting of November 1st. All right, all in favor of the motion, that signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign, motion carried. Right, minutes are approved. All right, the uh, chair would entertain a motion to go into public hearing regarding the adoption of the 2007 budget. Is there a second? Okay. I'm not sure, but I think I need a roll call vote on this. Um, Thomas? Or Jim? Yes. Colleen? Yes. Mark? Yes. Sandra? Yes. George? Yes. Larry? Yes. Okay. All right, so we are now in public hearing regarding the 2007 budget. Is there anyone here who has any comments, questions regarding the 2007 budget? This had been published in the Hudson Star Observer. It's been published. Copies have been made available. Is it on the website? No. no? It'd be a great download. Okay. None. All right. Seeing none, then, uh, Chair would entertain a motion to close the public hearing regarding the 2007 budget. I'll move. A second. Okay. Again, we'll do a roll call vote. Jim? I'm sorry? All in favor of the motion to close the public hearing? Yeah, uh, I, I move that, or yes. yes. <laughs> Colleen? Yes. Jim? Or Mark? Yes. Sandra? Yes. George? Yes. Yes. Arson, yes. Okay. Uh, Chair would then entertain a motion to adopt the 2007 budget. Should we do the presentation before the adoption? Do we need to? Yeah, we it really should be because I said it's supposed to be presented before oh, okay. yeah. those, those different layouts. How long is it going to take? Five minutes. Yeah. I'm quick. I don't talk a lot. Okay. Um, hey. We'll call. Yeah, this. All right. Uh, we should have a. Uh, let's see. Do, do we have a motion to adopt the budget? Yes. 
It was yours? Who, who had the second on that? Colleen. Colleen, okay. All right, so now we're in discussion. Okay. There are some statutory items that I know. Uh, Lori wanted to cover. Right here, uh, to answer George's question, this is the, the budget that was placed in the paper for the, the requirement of the 15 days before a public hearing for adoption. Um, a couple of items that you'll notice that have changed is um, instead of having the village hall project put into um, the revenues and expenses, we've created a separate fund to do that so that all costs will be segregated. It'll be easier to track and, and keep separate from the, the general fund. Um, basically, um, you won't see a lot of changes in the revenue. Some of the um, proceeds from long-term debt has made an effect because um, maybe they, because we aren't borrowing and we're pulling that down. Um, all three departments' budgets have decreased great job. Um, overall, there, there's very little raise. Um, the, the change that you'll see in the tax levy is the difference between 2% plus loan principal and, and interest loan payments, and that is by state statute. Um, so that takes care of that. One item that I'm required to present to the board, sorry. <laughs> is the um, long-term debt obligation. Um, you'll see the, our, our truck loan that's got 12,000 left on balance. Our series A that we refinanced in um, 05, actually end of 04. And then uh, some of the several smaller loans that we've, we've gotten since. Um, we did return $30,000, so you'll see on this one right here that it's already been reduced by that 30500 on a project that we chose not to complete. This is also um, one of the items that, thank you, It'll show the 2005 actual numbers, the 2006 budget, um, 2006 actual through November, um, projected year end, and then the 2007 uh, budget. And if going with that information, I'm able to come up with the village rates and overall rates, you'll see the 2006 assessed value, the equalized value. We've already, even since we just did the reval in last year, we're already down to 90 percent. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have our state um, budget amount, our county. This is the village's portion, the schools, and then our credit, and which leaves us with a 14.38 um, mill rate overall. So anyone have any questions? No? The 14.38 is the total for all of those yes. eight taxing agencies, not just the village. And that needs to be made clear. I, that's right. what I said. I said all. Just the village mill rate. 3.3. So if you take a $250,000 house, home, and you divide it by 1,000 of assessed value, you've got $250 times $3.33, you'll come up with the portion of that you contribute to the village. If you take the $14.38, you'll come up with your total tax for your home. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Any other comments regarding the budget? Okay. 
Well, see, the levy, just for uh, summary purposes, the levy is up $37,000, which is 3.3%. The operating expenses for 2007 will be less than they were for 2006, and less than they were for 2005, less than they were for 2004. So we have uh, four successive years where the operating expenses are actually going down. So it's a positive trend. One of the problems we're having is that what we call operating income, which is other than property tax, it's those other sources of revenue that come into the village just simply because of a municipality. Those are down, not as a lot in individually, but collectively they're down $58,000. So in terms of you know, why we're we struggling to try and make the, the, balance, the, the budget come out, that's, that's a large part of it. Okay. So... Uh, but I commend uh, everybody on the board as well as the staff for putting together a very good budget. It will be challenging, no doubt, at 2008 and beyond, that's for sure. But that is the way it's always been. So uh, we have a motion and a second to adopt the 2007 budget. Is there any further discussion on it? I think it's a very good trend. to be. Uh Seeing things going down with uh, the way things are in the world. It's a good job. All right. Um, all right. We'll uh, do a roll call vote. Sandra, start over here. Yes. Yes. George? Yes. Jim? Yes. Colleen? Yes. Mark? Yes. All right, uh, any comments from the floor? Jim, you want to talk for a while? No, I think I'm good. I'm just going to listen for a while. <laughs> I'm talking about, I'm looking at Jim O'Connor there. Go <laughs> ahead, <laughs> 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 Jim. Or did you have an, an item on the agenda you wanted to address? Uh, I haven't seen the agenda, but I hope it's on there about the library agreement. Yes, it's on there. Okay, whenever it's sort of Okay, all right. All right, uh, seeing no other comments from the floor, we'll move right. on. Mm -hmm. You have something else? Uh, no, that's all I have. Oh, okay. okay. All right, uh, next item on the agenda is the election clerks and inspectors, one-year appointments. We are required as a municipality to appoint them in the summary fashion. Yes. And Gloria has been good enough to uh, put together a quick uh, issue statement on that, as well as to list the individual clerks and inspectors for 2007. So... Chair would entertain a motion. Those documents are in the front. Yeah, they're right behind that uh, blank page behind uh, the budget. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I'll move to appoint the attached list of election inspectors for the term of January 1, 2007 to December 31st, 1st, 2007. I'll second. And I have a question. Uh, my name is on this list. I was asked to uh, if I would be a backup for this, and I, I said as long as it's not inappropriate. And I'm assuming since I made the list, it's not inappropriate. <coughs> I just won't be able to ask you when you're running for office. If you're on the ballot, you can't work as an election oh, inspector, okay, and well, that's got it. that's the issue. Yep. Okay. And I did. Yeah, that was clarified. Um, I'd like to thank all of our election inspectors and, and all the work that they do, um, especially after this last election. Um, <coughs> they, they work very hard, they're conscientious, and I really appreciate Hattie's good food. So. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, all in favor, any other further comments, questions? Okay, all in favor of the motion to uh, Accept the election clerks and inspectors as listed. Uh, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Uh, 2007 mobile home park license at uh, finance. The finance committee recommended approval of the 2007 mobile home parking license slash permit for Pamela Zappa. I'm assuming, Mark, you'll uh, uh, abstain. abstain from this issue okay this is simply an annual uh, renewal process okay 
So, Chair would entertain a motion to approve the uh, 2007 Mobile Home Park License for Pamela Zappa. So moved. Okay. Second. Any comments or questions? Okay. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay. Plan Commission, Chair update. Senior Advisor. <laughs> Do you have any chair update comments you need to provide us with? Well, the thing we did on our last meeting was we as the Planning Commission approved the, uh, the comprehensive plan on to you for your consideration okay. tonight. Which, which, which is the next item on the agenda. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good. Well, well, the chair. Go ahead. There was a ch time change for plan commission coming up. That we're going to go back to 7 o'clock now. We were, we were meeting an extra half hour because it was very time-consuming process and now we're going to go back to seven o'clock meetings okay. subject to change of something really big or lots of a debt okay. Okay. okay we need a motion then to begin the public hearing portion in order to adopt the comprehensive plan so the chair okay is there a second, second. okay uh, let's see. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote to go into open session Sandra yes George yes Jim Yes. Colleen? Yes. yes. Mark? Yes. Okay. All right. We are now in open session regarding the comprehensive plan. Are there any comments or corrections with respect to the comprehensive plan as submitted and recommended by the comp or by the plan commission? Patrick, I think you just had some minor. Just some minor things. And, uh, I don't think I've ever met Jim, so I'm Patrick Wildhouse from Cedar Corporation. Nice to, working with, yeah, nice to meet you, too. I've been working with the plan commission for almost uh, two years on the comprehensive plan. And I believe Donna gave you a, um, a comment sheet from the state, a copy yes. of it. So the st state, after reviewing it, said they, they were, wanted a little more information on a few areas. And what I did is, in front of you, there is a purple sheet. And on the purple sheet is what I wrote to address the missing requirements by the state. And uh, I've given uh, Mike a copy to look over. And, and basically, uh, typically, you just need a sentence or two or a small paragraph to address. And they, they were minor. Um, they were looking for more information about the relationship between the village and the uh, school district for the most part. Uh, one thing I can explain what I did uh, briefly is under land use, they wanted uh, 20 projections in the amount of land use needed for, for four different land uses, residential, commercial, industrial, and agricultural land. And, um, and that would be on the second side of the, uh, the purple sheet. And what I did is, I, uh, the first column is 2006, and that would be the existing land use acreages that we had in our map. And for residential, we had, as for population projections, we calculated approximately 33 house, new households every five years until 2025. So what I did was, um, in the text I wrote that, I'm, at this point we'll assume that you can get approximately three households per acre. So therefore we needed 11 acres of uh, new residential land within the village and this would come from vacant land um, and so as you see if you look across residential and add the 11 acres on in five-year increments that we get a total of 613 acres of land for residential purposes by 2025 and that, and that corresponds with our population projection for commercial <clears throat> I added two acres on every two years. You know, it's difficult to say when you're going to have commercial development, but I took the acreage that we showed as future commercial properties, potential, and I just divided that out. Um, we didn't really show any growth in the industrial park. I mean, it, it can't grow, and we didn't really uh, uh, identify an area for a future industrial park, so I left that the same, and of course there's no agricultural land in the village, so that re remained the same too. So uh, that's the biggest thing that I think I, I, I needed to go over. 
So where were these extra 52 acres going to come from? Well, you have... Annexation? No, I mean, you have all this and not planted. <coughs> I mean, it's, it's undeveloped. Oh. It may be planted, but this is more than enough. Okay. And what we did to, to figure out how many um, households we needed in the future, I think we looked at um, the, um, the maximum amount of lots you could probably get on that land, and then we looked at wastewater treatment plant capacity. To come up with that, so you do you do um, uh, have enough vacant land within the um, uh, the village to meet our population projections that we agreed upon. Because what do we say we have? What are we projecting that we have in terms of uh, developable lots? I, I think it was approximately we figured out about 130. 130. Yeah. Okay. And then what I have to do with this is. Um, you know, if you what you can do tonight, if you choose to do so, you can adopt the plan contingent upon the okay from the state on on us addressing their comments. Would all of this content be become a part of in the plan? Yes, and I, and I at the bottom of each section, I I put where I included it into the plan. Okay. All right. It's nothing that changes the focus or the meaning of the plan. No, I, and, and, and I understand. It. I'm just thinking, in terms of the motion, it is simply that the board would be adopting the motion or would be adopting the comprehensive plan as submitted by the plan commission mm -hmm. with these attachments. Sure. Okay. And what I'll do is, uh, because the grant uh, closeout date is the end of the year, um, they've assured me that. If, um, that as soon as I get this to them, they'll respond within a few days. I understand that there were a number of uh, changes that were recommended uh, and that they're not all included in here. Um, I, think, I think we made some changes out of the last plan commission meeting, but I did not have them in that updated draft. And Donna, Donna called me and went over some things, and I had it. Um, in the the word document, because she was pointing out, you know, you didn't get this in. And I said, well, I have it here. What I, I what I believe I did was, when I first printed those out, I turned everything into a, a PDF format, and then it's easier for me to print out all those copies. And after our last plan commission meeting, um, those I I didn't return. I didn't take the updated document and turn it into a PDF. I think I used the the previous one. So I don't know if you had anything specific. The village center, is this the village center? Or is the proposal to build a village center outside of the village hall? No, I, I think the village center, um, I I think there were two things. There was kind of, there was kind of a, a village center that could be the town hall, and then there was kind of a commercial center also. I think there was some maybe some confusion on how we use the wording. Mm -hmm. There um, is confusion. Uh, could, could you uh, could you read um, uh, the whole thing for me so I can identify understand the, the context? Identify future. This is overall comprehensive plan goals. Mm -hmm. One of the comments I had here is that every page should be numbered so we can reference it easier, but be that as it may. Uh, number two, identify potential areas for a future village center. And so I wondered, what's this? Well, I, I, I think we, we had a joint meeting, we talked about that, and I, I think for a governmental center, it kind of was decided this is where it was going to be. And then we talked about a commercial center, um, which w there were two options. One was possibly redevelopment um, of the uh, shop yards, or where we have commercial development of some vacant lands north of the, <coughs> on the north end of the village. And I think those are pointed out, I think those are referenced within the text. Okay. 
At our last, I, I think that we had that joint uh, board and plan, plan commission meeting. Uh, uh, and, and that issue was raised there as well. What, what exactly was meant by that? Yeah, I mean, there were certainly some who said, you know, well, wouldn't it be nice if we were to buy that land at the end of, or, uh, as you're leaving town on 35, that, that current open lot, put a village hall and mm -hmm. complex there. Um, yeah, and then there was discussion about that option versus, you know, just adding on to the village hall as well. And, you know, for economic reasons, I mean, that's in the short term. It makes more sense to do this now. This uh, this always will be an asset that could be potentially, uh, you know, a future option. Doesn't preclude us from doing that. Don't think it'll ever become the uh, uh, the public works building. But uh, so yeah, that was that was discussed. And then, then there's the other concept of you know, is it w wouldn't it be nice to have like a village center? You know, kind of like a, a downtown area, mm -hmm. but just you know, the way we're laid out, it just doesn't lend itself to that too well. So, so I think the plan commission did an excellent job of just working with the realities of, you know, that are uh, a part of the village. For all intents and purposes, we are pretty much developed. Mm -hmm. you know, we've got very, very little land. So, you know. okay. Did you ask, mother? Is there an appendix A? Um, there will be in the final draft. Um, I spent a lot of time looking for Appendix A. Uh, does it reference the... Uh, what does that one reference? I mean, I, I don't recall. Public participation resolution oh. passed by the Village Board can be seen in Appendix A. Right. So uh, I wondered what I had passed if it had been done. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I usually include... The, uh, the, the appendic appendices are typically... Uh, I'll put like the results of the citizen advisory board and the survey in the back and the adopted ordinance and the public participation plan. I normally do, don't include those in the draft. But you, but, want us to, but you want us to approve this document. Uh, c correct. But, uh, but I, um, I guess my thought was the, the appendices don't change the content of the comprehensive plan. It's things that were passed already, or like I said, the survey results or the um, uh, the citizen advisory board results. Mm -hmm. It would be in the final document that you get, and there, there should be a copy here, if um, because it was a resolution that was passed, I believe. That was what we passed early on during the process, right? That we were right. that we in would very incorporate beginning. public public input during the, throughout the whole process. Yes. Okay. Uh, but it makes sense. I mean, I understand that. I wish I'd been here for previous be The last one, I had to be out of town. Sure. I wish I'd been here, but I won't go on. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, if you were picking this thing up for the first time and trying to read it, you know, you'd go nuts. I did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Whereas you know, this is now the third draft because we've had two joint plan and board meetings to, to to go over it, and I certainly wanted to commend the plan commission for sticking with this monster because it's it's been 20 months in, in the making. Mm -hmm. uh, they took it on, which uh, a lot of a lot of communities hire consultants to to do the whole process, and uh, the fact that they took that activity on, did that work, saved us a lot of money. Uh, plus the fact that we were doing it in, uh, in concert with a, to, uh, two of the surrounding townships allowed us to apply for you know, grant money, which Patrick and Cedar Corp was good enough to help us uh, get. So the total cost of the plan uh, certainly came in a lot less, I think. Uh, what was our actual projected cost on the plan? You know, was it around 35000 Fifty thousand. I think first we we estimated fifty thousand and then uh, ended up with thirty. Yeah, I know the original estimate that we were told to put in the budget was one hundred and twenty-five. Mm -hmm. Easy could have made a movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was with higher. That's what if the plan commission hadn't stepped up to the plate. So I commend them highly for doing that. 
One of the things I'm not even sure that it's even something that would be in a document of this type, but as I read it, I just saw dollar signs all over, but there were no dollars associated with some of the recommendations. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it would be absolutely overwhelming if dollars were to be attached to or calculated on, you know, by the year 2010, if all of this was accomplished, the cost would be, and I think it would be staggering. Mm -hmm. uh, such things as developing a uh, uh, transportation system in a village that's less than two miles from one end to the other. I don't wonder about a transportation system mm -hmm. and developing village centers. And you look at these, appropriating or buying land for future use of such and such, um, way out there. Sure. And so I think although the plan, you know, this is a lot of pie in the sky, when you look at it, the reality is that we could not afford to do the majority of the things in here. There are some sure we can do, and some of the things we look at and would consider as we build it, or these 52 acres that you proposed or looked at. Uh, but uh, I, I hope that this is taken on. Wow, wouldn't that be interesting? Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, typically, you um, you're encouraged not to put dollar amounts to it and then say we can't do it. Uh, when you work on your comprehensive plan, you're supposed to, um, whether they're feasible or not, put down what you think are good ideas. And some of them you may achieve and some you may not. Um, I, th I think sometimes there's a little misunderstanding when you say, and we change the wording. Cause it, uh, in the past it said goals, objectives, and then policies, programs, and actions. Uh, and we changed it to options to achieving the goals because there was concern that do we have to do all these things? And as with the, within the plan commission, when we were coming up with these, we were looking at things that we thought were reasonable to do or reasonable options to um, achieve the goals, not based on whether we can afford them or not. So uh, with the transportation system, <coughs> That was brought up because the state and, uh, and uh, a regional group is looking at getting passenger rail through the system, through the area, and I know we made some references to um, uh, the use of the shop yards if it was ever redeveloped, or it could be uh, something like a, a rail connection or something like that. I mean, those I think those are reasonable options. Yes, they'd be terribly expensive, but um, I I think they're they're good ideas to support. Obviously, uh, I've had quite a little bit of reading to do the last couple of weeks, um, but uh, I did actually have the opportunity to uh, to skim through this, and, and my compliments. Uh, there's definitely a lot of work put into it, and I, I agree with George on a couple of things. And as far as transportation, obviously, it appears that our village is is destined to be walking and taking bicycles. Uh, within the village for quite a while, but the, it, it's all wonderful. But little things that, that struck me, um, um, just, and I know that this is a final draft, things can change, but like, if we were to ever put up uh, welcome signs into the village of North Hudson, the one coming down from the north, that's no problem at all, but it appears that the one from the south uh, is basically in the Malaloo Bar parking lot, and, um, it seems like it's just a little bit out of place. I'm sure there's a few typos that we will be correcting as yeah. time goes on. And, and that was just to show general location. Okay. Because we know definitely to the south it would be difficult to find a spot. Okay. Um, okay. There's that apartment building sign. Yeah. And I mean, realistically, it's, it's nitpicking. And, and obviously, I, I haven't had the opportunity to read this word for word. But it, it is, is basically a, a yeah. very well done job. I think the thought there was generally it'd be nice to have uh, entrance signs to the village. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that at all. And I do agree, though, with George. There is uh, there's a few issues that, you know, a, a nice little bow to tie it all together, assuming that uh, that will happen mm -hmm. um, to pull it all together. I, I think it's a, a, a very, very well done piece. Well, I have a checklist as we, uh, you know, for some of these things. And as they're mm -hmm. accomplished, check them off because there's quite a few things in here we're already doing. Sure. Uh, but one of the things I was amused by, the village is responsible for the maintenance, 
of the water mains and the hydrants. Well, well, not too sure about that because we rent the fire hydrants. Yeah, waste them or maintain them. We have to maintain them? I thought the fire department comes in and drains them. The fire department does not maintain hydrants in any community anymore. That's done by a local water utility. Thank you. Yeah. At least in the state of Wisconsin, it's the water utility that maintains the hydrants and the mains. It's not the fire department. Thank you for that. Yeah. Perhaps the fire departments are actually responsible for the hydrants in Minnesota. And that's what I was under the impression from past experiences. All right, good. I was at the fire department as they come and ask us here on the hydrants that we maintain the yearly and they asked us as an inspector to make sure we are maintaining them. Oh, so they inspect them to make sure we're maintaining them. Well, no, they come and ask us how much maintenance we've done. Okay. Well, which is... Oh, yeah. They make sure they're all working. Okay. That's what you want it for in the wintertime for them to fill up the fire and have it frozen. Froze up. Up. Right. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but your idea, George, was actually part of what several members of the Plan Commission at the last meeting had suggested that there be kind of like a checklist that we could kind of check off over the next several years to, as, as we take off some of these items. Okay. Any other comments or not? Or comments or questions? Okay. If not, then the uh, chair would entertain a motion to uh, close the public hearing. Close. Second. <laughs> we got to separate okay. you two. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right uh, uh, we need a roll call vote to do that. Let's start over here. Sandra? Yes. George? Yes. Jim? Yes. Colleen? Yes. Mark? Yes. Larry? Yes. All right, public hearing is closed. And then on the uh, plan commission section of your book on the uh, second page, there's a suggested motion there. I'm going to do that for number four dash two zero. Six contingent on all corrections slash changes being made to the final copy of the comprehensive plan that was submitted to the village board in compliance with the letter dated December 1, 2006 from the State Department of Administration. Is there a second? Second. Further comments? Okay. And, uh, all in favor of the motion then signify by saying aye. We'll do a roll call vote. Sure over here, Jim. Aye. Colleen? Yeah. Mark? R. Sandra? Yes. <laughs> George? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, yes. I'm going to say yes. <laughs> Mike, on behalf of all of us, uh, we thank you for getting the comp plan done. It's a great task. Oh, uh, let's see. In fact, let's see. Them. That pretty much takes care of everything under plan commission. I know Mike probably wants to go home. Uh, if I can just uh, beg the board's forgiveness and get out of order for a second and move down to item number 15. Uh, Daryl Score, who is currently the chair of the plan commission, has uh, just recently had surgery and will not be able to continue in this capacity. Uh, Mike has been surrogate chair several times in Daryl's absence over the last couple of years. And so I am uh, recommending that uh, Mike Miser uh, replace Daryl as the chair of the plan commission, completing his uh, designated term. So that is my motion. And Mark has seconded it. Okay. Thank you for taking that on. Yes. Now, well, yeah. Lord, after we pass this, will he be administered an oath of office like we did to Jim? God, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> 
No. No. We didn't tell him this, this is a lifetime appointment. Whose <laughs> wife? It's one of the few. Okay. All right. So, all in favor of the nomination, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, aye. same sign. Motion carried. Mike, thank you very much for everything Thanks, and for continuing to go forward. We appreciate it. So if you want to go into your family, you're certainly welcome. To do it. All right, coming back to the agenda in the order of the uh, Finance Committee. Uh, for claims, the um, Finance Committee recommended approval of the November claims. So the Chair would entertain a motion. Move that we approve the November non recurring claims totaling $13,526.71. A second. <coughs> Anyone have any comments? <coughs> Excuse me. Anyone have any comments on the claims? Okay. If not, then uh, we'll vote. And this has to be a roll call. Start over here. Sandra? Yes. George? Yes. Jim? Yes. Colleen? Yes. Mark? Yes. <coughs> Motion is approved. Employee vacation and comp time carryover. Uh, as you may have noticed, it was comp time. We had su substantial discussion in the uh, finance committee. Saying we'd like not to see people being pressed so hard that they can't use their comp time and so they can't use their vacation time. Uh, by the same token, we certainly don't want to deny them or take away that they're, they're earned time off. So the comp finance committee did recommend approval of the uh, suggested carryover. So the chair would entertain a motion to that if for no other reason so we can discuss the issue. I'll, I'll second. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, uh, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay. 2000, these <coughs> 2007 equipment and hourly staff rates, which are the rates for the equipment and for staff when they are engaged in work for which somebody will be billed. Uh, Glory put that set of data together along with the rest of the staff. Represents a slight increase from prior years. Chair would entertain a motion to approve the 2007 equipment and hourly staff service rates. I move approval. I will second that. Okay. Any comments or questions regarding it? Okay. If not, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. 2007 amendment to the joint library agreement, approval requested. The uh, library agreement, uh, this is referred to as the second addendum, right? <laughs> addendum, not addendum. Um, simply allows participating communities uh, the opportunity if they wish to back out of the agreement with one year's notice rather than two as is currently provided. So for, for purposes of discussion, Chair would entertain a motion and a second, then we have some discussion I'm sure Jim wants to deal with something. You want a second, you said? Uh, oh, you can, you, you. I'll move approval of the um, second addendum to the joint library agreement. Is there a second? No second. Okay. Jim, did you want to address that? Okay, well, pretty uh, clear on the face there is that the agreement presently drafted has had a, a one year cancellation clause up until this time. As of the end of the year, it scheduled to go into a two-year withdrawal provision. Uh, one of the towns expressed some reservations about that, and so to um, <coughs> preclude any issue, the library board is proposing uh, continuing with the one-year withdrawal provision in the uh, assumption that uh, 
the Joint Library will go forward, and uh, this is um, just to keep everybody um, comfortable with it. If there are any questions, I'll be glad to address them. Does any municipalities indicate any interest in withdrawing? No, not an interest in withdrawing, George. They were just in unease um, about the two-year commitment. And uh, there really is no cause for it in that the agreement we have now is just for operating funds only. There's no, it, uh, we'll have to have a new agreement when we get to a capital situation. But still, um, there was some discomfort with it. So uh, that's what we uh, proposed to overcome that discomfort. Okay. Anyone have any other questions for Jim just related to the operation of the library? <coughs> Can you explain something on here? The what expense per circulation means in this dollar figure? Uh, yes, I, I'd like to, uh, to go over that um, uh, overview I give, I've given you. There are four main elements to it. Uh, starting off with there is a very strong demand for library services from residents in this area. Library usage has doubled in the last six years. 12% a year compounded. It's pretty remarkable that it's doubled in just six years. There are now 930 items a day going out of the library. Tomorrow, uh, next year rather, there'll be 1,000 items a day, 1,000 bucks a day going out of that library. Come back That's a lot of circulation. <laughs> sitting here thinking this thing. All of them. All of Mark, except possibly yours. <laughs> Where is the library? I was just going to say. It's right next to where the jail used to be. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You guys set this up. <laughs> it's the hazards of when we know each other too well. <laughs> and uh, come to your question, Sandra. The library is being run very efficiently. The, uh, the operating cost divided by the circulation, it's $2 each for everything going out of there. Versus uh, what 3.39, I think it is on state average. So we're uh, way below, way more efficient than the state comparisons. And uh, going with that, then the next item is the circulation per employee. Here again is far more efficient than the state average. So the people are very busy down there. And uh, the result of all that efficiency is that we have very low tax rates here. You'll see that the per capita support. The library here is less than half the state average, so we're we're really pinching pennies there. And uh, also, the tax rate is way below half. Twenty-one cents per thousand is in the agreement versus fifty-seven uh, for the state average, so we're uh, way below there also. Um, the the downside of all this good news is the last item is that our residents are being underserved. We don't have near enough books. We are way too crowded there. We need much more space. And we're operating with very limited staff. So that's uh, that's overview of where we're at. And uh, you all received uh, earlier a copy of our consultant's report uh, this summer that um, went into a lot more detail about um, the facility that we need versus what we have and what, what the kind of facility that we should have for our population area. Uh, this is just a sum thumbnail sketch of that information. Tim, I do have to comment that the staff there is really fantastic and they're very helpful. But I, I do agree with your, your um, assessment here that when I request books, they usually are through the interlibrary loan. It mm -hmm. seems that Hudson has very few of the current volumes that I'm looking for. That is a problem. We recognize and, and that. Yeah, it seems like Hudson is uh, unable to hold up their part. Um, I'm possibly, you know, based on the size or whatever. Um, There's a lot of demand for current titles. Mm -hmm. There is. Mm -hmm. We have a hard time keeping keeping Oddly, up with it. They seem to come from the smallest towns, though. The ones I request, the current titles. What Tan is referring to is that we are in a consortium of. Uh, <coughs> about 10 counties in this part of the state that have an interlibrary loan. And there's a, um, a, a van that runs around daily 
delivering the books between the libraries. And you can go online or go to the library, either one, and order uh, the books. You can, have, can search uh, all the books by any subject, title, author, however you want to do it online. Order them from, you can see which libraries have them. If we don't have them, and they'll have them in Rice Lake, have them in Menominee, or wherever it'll be. And you can order them in. Yourself and you'll get an automated list. phone call two days later saying your, your books in Hudson, pick it up. It's a great service for the public uh, because it gives you access to a whole lot more books than we can possibly have here. And of course, we send them out to other places too, but we are a net borrower. I mean, I'm assuming that's the whole reason for becoming part of the consortium. It is. It's so that no one facility is expected to maintain a comprehensive set of volumes. Yes, it would be nice, but by making the phone call, you can have the same, you can have the book delivered in 48 hours. Yep. Jim, what is the uh, tax that I'm, I'm going to use the word tax uh, that the Hudson Library has to pay for being a member of that consortium? I'm sure it doesn't come for free. Uh, we do pay fees because um, there is a. Uh, <coughs> Uh, staff in Eau Claire that administers this. It's a state-sponsored organization. The whole state's divided up into these um, these library groups. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, feder federated library systems are called. Um, but we are paying twelve to fifteen thousand a year, is my recollection, in that area, which covers all this: the book courier system, and also there is a small. Uh, it also supports our a common database system. This is all based on. It supports the, the uh, database systems that's on. It also provides our team online for all the public uh, computers there. And uh, support staff that assists all the librarians in professional and technical matters. <coughs> okay. Jim, do they track the uh, average age like on a chart? Who's, who's using the li library predominantly these days? Everybody. High everybody. I mean. uh, we have a, a very strong children's program uh, with um, programs for all ages. We have teen groups. We have a, a book club uh, that meets regularly and is for book discussion. Um, a lot of students, uh, like high school particularly, use the computers and word processors in the library, which we need far more of. We don't need more space for them. And uh, it's right up on through senior citizens. It, it, everybody. They probably track this somehow so that a person would be able to gain access to it. There is no, there's no database relating to age. Okay. Yeah, I look at the numbers of uh, 27,000 books uh, for the Hudson based on a Wisconsin average of 19, and it seems like there's a potential for a lot of employee stress there. <laughs> well, there, there is some, but we, we are well, proud of our staff. They do well, but um, they are very busy. In fact, uh, well, this year we put in um, two uh, 3M automated self-checkout systems. So now you don't have to go to uh, the, the desk clerk to get it checked out. You put your library card in the machine, wave the barcode thing under the reader, and it prints out a slip uh, as acknowledging your checkout and when it's due and, and um, do it all yourself. But that's one of the efficiency type things we're working on. Be able to buy one. And you get three of them to give us the other one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions? If not, we've still got a lot of items on the agenda for tonight. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate yeah. it. Uh, and you gave a motion on the uh, amendment on the floor. We already have it on the floor. Mm -hmm. assuming, it, assuming it passes, <laughs> I'd like to authenticate it tonight and I take it. The towns on Thursday. Oh, sure. Sure. different than what I was given. The proposal got down to the staff in City Hall. Since they got a full-time professional staff that looks at all these things, they had a minor wording change, but it says the same thing. 
They call it an amendment instead of an addendum. Yeah, I don't understand that, but I, I think what she was also saying. Uh, Our, our motion was to approve the s second addendum to the joint library. So maybe the motion needs to be withdrawn. I'm, I'm not sure. Withdraw the motion. Or amend it. Uh, it's just a, we, we, we can just do an agreed upon uh, change in the motion. It's to uh, approve the amendment to the joint library agreement. The language doesn't yeah. change. So if both the um, person who made the motion and the second agree to that, okay. Georgia, you get the second. So this is changed to okay. amendment. The only thing that changed was at the top and in the pack it says second addendum and, then, and the one that we're actually passing it says amendment. Okay. And here's my... You think they got sharp people in Hudson? Right? <coughs> okay. I want to know what the first one was. The first one was, and that was the reason it was an addendum, they tell me, is because that added to the agreement. That was when for 06 and 07, you limited the increase to 2%, mm -hmm. which is really starting to pinch us in 07. It's pinching us too, Jim. Yeah, I know. Uh, but, uh, maybe because that what was that, was, that was, an, that was, I'm assuming, the first addendum to the joint library agreement. And this, so this made sense to be the second addendum. Well, the distinction they so, claim is that that was an addition, but this is a change. Right, but it's anyway. not the second. It's the first amendment. And this just does say Simply amendment. an amendment, period. Is it the first amendment? No, this says a amendment. It doesn't a say amendment. Then, we can, then it's okay. okay. We'll let it go. <laughs> We're glad it passes. No, it doesn't. I said that. Hey, oh, you said that. Okay. Okay, Tom. So that could go. I got it. Baby. All right. Okay. So what we're voting on here is an amendment to the to the joint library agreement. <laughs> and we have a motion and a second. All in favor of the agreement <coughs> of the uh, change in the uh, uh, amendment to the joint library agreement indicate by. Say so by saying yes. 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 All opposed, same sign. Yes. Motion carried. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, moving on to the 2007. Uh, thank you, Jim. The. Finance Committee is also recommending uh, approval of the 2007 EMS ambulance contract with the City of Hudson. I think in round numbers that was like 25.5 per year. 25.837. 25.8. That's a pretty good deal. Second. Can I just point out one change that should be in there? There's a reference in the middle of that uh, agreement to that this is an intergovernmental agreement, which used to be always referred to as the 6630 agreements because that was the section of the statutes. But back in 2001, they renumbered the statutes and it's no longer 6630, it's 66.0301 because they renumbered the entire chapter 66. So that, that should be changed, point zero three zero one. I don't have a copy of the state statutes with me. <laughs> I didn't either, but I went and looked before here just to, because I knew it had been changed. I just didn't know what the new number was. Is that right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I have to leave something up to the attorney. That's right. Otherwise, no reason to be here. Otherwise, it's, yeah. Well, I'd, I'd sit in that chair. Okay. Okay. Any comments or questions regarding? Can I make the, one other comment yes, then? Well, we <laughs> as long as we're looking at this, the uh, is. Is everybody clear on, on the changes there on, on paragraph four, which it appeared to me that they were taking out the capital equipment reserve account because that shows in the comments there on the right as being deleted. Mm -hmm. But then right below that, it then refers to the capital reserve account. Is that something different than the capital equipment reserve account? And then, you know, it talks about that up here in section A, but then down below in, in C, 
D and E, it takes out the word capital. And I'm just wondering, is there a reserve account, a capital reserve account, and a capital equipment reserve account, which has been deleted? It just it didn't seem to me to be consistent. And I, I didn't know enough about it to know whether there are those different accounts or whether it just was a little bit inaccurate in the editing. Because the change at the top in, in, in section four appears to say, you know, the underlying language would be the new language, and it says uh, that uh, additional revenues may be required to support both operating and capital funds, which, in, and then based on the deletion of the capital equipment reserve account, seemed to say to me that, well, instead of having a capital account, we're just going to have a reserve account that's both for operating and for capital, which is fine. But then the very next paragraph, it starts talking about the capital reserve account, which seemed to me to be something they just deleted. I think they are trying to just have one reserve account, account rather than two. Yeah, that's because they, the later on in the agreement, it provides for in the event that the reserve account gets large enough, they could use that to actually uh, reduce the payments for the participating. For the operations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Then I guess my sense would be that another uh, uh, edit or change would be that in paragraph 4A where it talks about capital reserve account, that's what, you know, they've eliminated capital all the way down as they've gone through. They should probably take capital out of that paragraph so it would just say the annual reserve account assessments as opposed to capital if it's just going to be a reserve account generally. Basically what you're saying is they missed one of the capitals. Yep. Yeah. And the other thing, I was just uncertain of whether they're going to have more than one account. Or, and it, I think the intention is it appears to me to have one account, and that's fine. Uh, I, it just didn't seem to be to be consistent through the document. So I, I think that that word should come out of there as well, and then it's consistent. That's it. It would be yours. Yeah, I'm just kind of trying to get a, a grasp on the difference between those two. But yeah, um, he's saying remove that. Yeah, it does seem like that that's what they're... I think that's what they intended, and I think they just missed one. I'm surprised that Hudson Sharpies didn't catch it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's been nice. No. I didn't say that. Oh, no, I was picking up what Jim was saying earlier. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, let's not do that. <laughs> All right, uh, so let's see. Then the motion would be to approve the agreement with the one modification on page 2, line 3, no, line uh, or paragraph A, 4A. And, and the statutory reference. Okay, and the statutory reference. Okay. okay. And I'll second that. Okay. okay. Have you at least got the gist of that, Kathy? Yeah. All right. Oh, I think it should just be noted that uh, item five, which talks about the finances, I for one am, uh, I think we're getting a good deal here. The per capita capital fund, there's that capital again. Mm -hmm. So I would raise the question, do we want to delete it from item five also? It doesn't change the essence of the statement, though. The per capita capital fund assessment for the year 2007 shall be $7 per person. And I think that that's a good price for peace of mind that we have that service. The continuation of that sentence is for a total of $25,837. And that's based on a uh, population in the village of 3,691. Okay. okay, all in favor of the motion? Signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. And the 2007 Hudson Area Joint Fire Contract. 
the uh, finance committee is recommending approval of the contract. The chair would entertain a motion. Second. Any comments, or questions regarding the contract itself? Any corrections or inappropriate <laughs> state references, statutory references? Looks good to me. George, how much is eighty-one thousand dollars per person? Uh, Fifteen bucks. How many do we have? Thirty-six ninety-one. Twenty-two. Oops. They have bigger trucks. <coughs> More of them too. Huh? More what? More of them too. More of them too. Yeah. Okay. Bigger garage. Seeing no other comments, um, all favor of having any, any, any more comments? I'm not trying to race things. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. And an agreement with our building inspector, uh, one year term. Fees are the same. Change anything in there? In yeah. there? Just the, just the oh, okay. We'll just correct it. That's a typo. I'm done. Okay. Not consequence. Okay. Any, <coughs> any other comments or questions regarding the building inspector? Yes. Just for some typos. The truly corrected copy. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay. Uh, Cedar Corporation Agreement. Second. All second. Okay. Any questions or comments? The uh, motion is for the amendment. Is that correct? To the contract? Yes. Okay. Agreement to amend. Uh, amend and extend. And and which, is that public works? Agreement to amend. Um, that's under finance. Right. Yeah, item right there. The agreement to amend and extend the engineering services agreement. Anyone's watching is wondering if we're just racing through these agreements. It's it's not. We had very rather lengthy discussion in finance over all of them. Cedar Corp along with just about everybody else was there. So. All right. Uh, all in favor of the uh, motion to amend and continue the contract, extend the contract, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. All right, Public Works. Uh, Mark, are you filling oh. in for uh, for Joe? I am. Um, we do have uh, one item we need to vote on, and that is the uh, hiring of some part-time employees. And uh, before I get to that, or superintendents here, would you want to anything you might want to add to it? Uh, one on a regular basis, 
Well, the, these are individuals that are, are strictly part-time, that there's a, an hourly part up. Uh, there is a cap as to total hours that they're going to be running. Um, I think the cumulative cap is, what, 500 hours for three? Well, for, for part-time personnel. For part-time, uh, yeah. Basically, uh, what's in the budget for 2007 is $2,000. But basically, uh, uh, well, for a snow thing, that's... Uh, Roughly 142.8 hours. So what you're asking the board to approve is simply the really the three individuals that you will use during the course of the year. Yes, and it's it's the it's already budgeted. The, yeah, it's already budgeted. The procedure <coughs> has already been approved. It's just now we have three specific names. Yep. Okay. So we should have uh, we need a recommendation on the three names. Yeah, we have Adam Bjornstead. Um, Dwayne Bonzi and Brent Jensen. And I guess I'd recommend that the, um, those three individuals be hired um, as part-time employees to assist in snow plowing during the 2006-2007 snow season. Is there was a second? The, was the determination made whether they were going to be part-time or subcontracted? I know they'll be available at uh, a phone call. Does that make any difference here at all? We were going to leave that to Mark and Gloria to determine which under uh, uh, both uh, state statute Sounds good. Uh, as, as well as applicable uh, state laws, which, which way to, to treat them. Basically, they're all part-time or temporary. Go ahead. Is there a second? I second it. Yeah, Jim, okay. Okay, all in favor of hiring the three named individuals as temporary employees to work in public works when as needed, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you, right, tree service. Uh, basically, I have to request a point. <laughs> <laughs> At the request of the village administrator, I contacted Dennis Olm of St. Croix Tree Service, who's had the contract here since 1990. Uh, Dennis expressed to me at this time they're not willing to renegotiate the contract as is basically because the contract none of the rates have been increased since 1990. So what's his point? Uh, basically <laughs> uh, what I was told is that uh, the only way they would look at renegotiating the contract with the village is if the rates doubled. So mm -hmm. at that time this is actually as a quite Talking to Gloria and everything else, I explained this to her, this doesn't actually come under public works, it's actually under public welfare, so I don't know if you want public works to continue running with the ball regarding a, finding a tree contract or negotiating a tree contract, or if you do want to do it with public welfare. So the bottom line is we don't have an agreement to approve it? No, there is no agreement to approve Okay. All right, so that... Okay. Yeah, um, we had a couple other items at public works. That uh, were discussed that we don't have to vote on, but just uh, information. One is um, uh, the plan commission had asked Public Works to look at um, uh, some um, storm sewer traps in a couple areas around the village, and and we had, and at this time we um, don't have a reasonable solution, and um, not going to take any action with that sort of activity right now. The other. Uh, item was um, the uh, um, uh, St. Croix Station road repair um, and we're going to, uh, the engineers and the superintendent are going to look at that road a little closer and again we haven't decided on what to do with that and that will develop over the course uh, of the next couple months but you know, just indicate they are not forgotten but we don't have any uh, recommendations at this time. I would like to add just briefly that um, somewhere along the line between perhaps between now and next April, and this is not a reflection of public works solely me, is I'd like to see something with that referendum limit be addressed somehow, just as a notion. Right. Uh, anything else under public works? That's it right okay. now. Public safety. Uh, 
We had a rather brief meeting on uh, November uh, 9th, uh, but out of that we do have the recommendation to capitalize $2,000 for the purchase of installation of an LED light bar, light bar for one of our squads. Um, as you can read in the background on the issue statement, uh, one of the issues that we have is that these old uh, light bars just are drawing so much current, they're eating up our alternators. Uh, Mark, would you? is there any more we need to say besides what they see in the issue statement here? Is that captured pretty much? So it's, and that, would that be on that? That's on a new squad, isn't it? Or is that, help me out, is that replacing an existing one? It's replacement. Yeah, replacement. And that's in the budget for our fund. I would just make that uh, motion to capitalize $2,000 for the purchase and installation of an LED light bar for squad 913. I, wasn't that done already? I think you guys approved that. Yeah, it's... We did. Within, in within, public safety. In public safety. We don't need to. I think we took care of it at the board with the last budget meeting also. Okay. Because oh, it's okay. not yeah. formally on the agenda to approve oh, it. It's yes. already been okay, approved. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, anything else? Yep. There is a contract that you'll see in your board packet for the AIA document B151 1997. And what this is, um, as we started to read this, a few of us, we go, yeah, right. This is a boilerplate for the architectural firm. Uh, for the uh, addition and renovation of this building. What we have decided to do is to postpone uh, our recommendation for <coughs> approval of this contract until after we've been able to have the architect come before the Public Safety Committee where we can do a review. We want to ensure that the uh, amounts that you see listed on page uh, pages 13 and uh, <coughs> And then there's more on page one of the additions and deletions report. And what we would like to do is talk to the architect to ensure that the numbers that we're seeing here are consistent with the agreement that we had because the format is completely different from what we had before. So we will come before you perhaps in January with uh, some explanations and corroboration that everything is, uh, is accurate and as originally agreed upon. Okay. And Gloria has indicated that her willingness to contact uh, Todd and uh, invite him to the meeting, which will be a week from Thursday. All right, Mark, anything to add to that? Well, I, um, that, that helps me to want to Go ahead. at least yeah. mention, I think, the, uh, I, I believe we'd like to form an ad hoc committee to handle <coughs> the building process so that we do have our lines of communication open, know who's going to call and mm -hmm. do that. So if anybody has any recommendations on how to approach that, I think we should discuss that at the next public safety meeting. So if there's any input between now and then, okay. appreciate it. I think there should be, I personally think there should be one board member, two, two citizens at large, and the um, uh, village staff, uh, for this department heads, Gloria, uh, Chief Riker, and... Uh, Mark Eckblad, and uh, uh, I have one individual who would like to do it, um, but if anybody knows of somebody else who may want to participate in that, that would be helpful. Okay. Right. And your suggestion was that these meetings be held during the day, No, right? I'm saying they may have to be held during the day. Okay. I think, mm -hmm. and, and they maybe have to be held quickly, you know, depending on how things pop up, and I think... Uh, but as you can see now, just asking Gloria to make sure he get calls the architect. It's, we should get these lines down so that we don't have to spend a lot of board time with um, routine things like that. Are you at this time soliciting the public at large for nominations? Absolutely. Self-nominations? Yeah, if somebody would like to participate, that's fine. It'd be great. Uh, the only other change I had was actually uh, I want to draw your attention to the fact that we that in the minutes you'll notice that uh, it says the next public safety meeting has been moved to Wednesday, December 13th. 
we have moved that back to Thursday, December 14th. I say back, and then I, you talk about it day four, but I return it to the originals, originally scheduled date of December 14th. Okay. And uh, we are moving our meeting time to begin at 5.30. Uh, I know some of the meetings have been at 6 or 6.30. I want to make sure everybody's aware at 5.30. Is that okay, Mark? Okay. Okay. And that's all I had. Super. Thank you. Can, uh, can I make one public works comment real no. briefly? Yes. <laughs> is uh, just as a reminder, it's been mentioned several times, but we're used, the village is going to be using exclusively salt on the streets, so we haven't had much need for uh, salting yet. But if you don't see sand, don't call. It's not that the, the streets aren't being treated, but it's straight salt this year. Okay, moving on to public welfare. Uh, now, Mr. Report, just um, between Gloria and myself, the village attorney, and a couple phone calls, we clarified some of the questions the board had about the holding period um, spelled out in here, and also confirmed that there was no fees beyond what is in the original contract, the 127 and 137 for uh, the holding fee for felines or canines. And I think those were the only questions. All right, so are you going to make a motion? Um, I would move that we uh, adopt the contract with uh, Humane Society for Companion Animals in Woodbury for uh, animal control services. Okay. And it's for a period of, yeah, it's a initial period of six months. Calling you at the second. Yep. Okay. <coughs> Any additional comments? <coughs> and along those lines, um, I, I wanted to mention too that there's a uh, an organization starting up in Hudson called Saint Croix Animal Friends that has been working towards building a local shelter because of um, not much capacity left in Woodbury, and this area desperately needs animal control facilities. They've got some great people involved in their board. They're looking for more volunteers, people interested with uh, maybe donating land or funds or even just their own time. So anybody who would like to uh, get involved, uh, the group meets, I believe it's the first Thursday. And they do have a website, but I don't have it. Um, I'll get you some contact information next time. Okay. Where did you say that was? Where? Oh, it's uh, St. Croix Animal Friends. They have been meeting. I like Peter. No. <laughs> <laughs> and the interesting thing about the group is that they receive their nonprofit accreditation in pretty much record time. So they they really have their stuff together and great goals for the community. Okay. All right. Well, we have a motion to approve the agreement with the Humane Society for Companion Animals. Mm -hmm. And a second. Any further comments or questions regarding that? If not, all in favor of that motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same side. Motion carried. While we're in that department, can I ask a question? Not the, sure. In the minutes. Uh, the uh, parks are right by the corrections department. You have Is to. that what corrections department? Right here in the village? No, I know. Oh, you look know. at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you it's, have to it's ask Colleen. Oh, Colleen. <laughs> because we're under the same tab. I want my own tab. <laughs> you want? <laughs> I think she ought to get her own tab. <laughs> do, we share a tab. Do you know what what corrections department we use? The Saint Croix uh, County Correctional Department. Uh, Richmond. Thank you. Okay. As opposed to green shoes. Gucci shoes. Park board. Um, I'm sorry, was that all you had, Sandy? That's it. Go ahead, Kelly. Oh, yeah, it was. The, the need your own tab. Have been purchased and will be installed in Fairland Green Park for the vehicle of Fairland Parking only. And the volunteers just will start.
start working on the updated um, outdoor recreation plan. It'll be kind of our main thing for next year. Okay. So your next meeting will be in February? February. Yep, we're not I'll meeting in February, December. Okay. Okay, just wondering, uh, is that it? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I concur with Sandy. I think Park ought to get their own tab. <laughs> yeah. Well, I apologize. Oh, <laughs> Colleen, I'm just share. on there right I there. There will be no public welfare meeting in December, no. correct? And the Park Board is canceled for January. You're leaving town. Is that right? <laughs> uh, all right, then we'll just move on to new business from the board president's comments. Uh, we've already taken care of the uh, matter of reappointing a replacement for uh, Daryl. Uh, again, I want to thank him, and I do have a, just a little token certificate to give him for uh, appreciating his efforts for being the uh, plan plan commission chair for the last three years. Uh, anyone who's interested in running for Board of Trustees, uh, the election obviously is in April. You need to file by January 2. Come down, get the forms, uh, get some signatures. It's not that many. And then turn them back in by January 2. If you file after that date, you certainly, you certainly can run for office after that. Then you just uh, can't get your name on the ballot. Is that right? Correct. Correct. You write it. Uh, run as a write-in. Run as a write-in. Okay. Uh, let's see. There is another, and I'm just I'm just bring, bringing up a subject which hopefully we'll talk about in uh, January. So I don't want to get into any discussion tonight. But I've had three residents or groups of residents around the village, all dealing with basically the same issue, which is what do we do when we've got you know an individual in the neighborhood. Uh, who simply is not taking care of their property in a manner that is appropriate, and how do we deal with that? So I'm in the process of trying to research to see what other kinds of uh, language or approaches have other municipalities done. So just wanted to make people aware of that, because uh, I can understand having visited all three of them, that uh, in terms of you know, if it were next to me, I'd be as upset as they are. So what we're going to do is whole other matter but I just wanted to make you aware of that so I had well a couple of things I'm going to recap uh, first the plan commission time has been changed back to 7 p.m. and then um, I also was going to talk about the candidacy declaration pa papers that are due on January 2nd so if you're thinking of running or re re upping please have them in by 5 o'clock on January 2nd also, um, if you're you're considering not, or you're you're deciding not to re uh, re up, uh, non candidacy forms are due by December 22nd at 5 p.m. And then uh, just to remind everyone that we do have another election on December 12th for the school board referendum, and. Um, I just want to say again, please register ahead of time. Um, just because you are on the poll list uh, in the years past does not mean that you're registered in the new state system. And we do, we, we're about 500 to 600 short, which is, is really a long ways from where we started. So um, I appreciate all the residents coming in early and trying to get registered to avoid the, the long lines. And that's it. Great. That's all we've got on the agenda, so the chair would entertain a motion. I'm going to adjourn. Is there a second? <laughs> second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you, one and all. No, 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 no. Have a great week. You went to a